Today we're going to start a very fun new unit. We're going to use this program called Kerbal Space Program to learn about rockets and powered space flight. So I'm very excited. On your desktop you should have a Kerbal Space Program shortcut like I do. Go ahead and click it. And I'm going to pause the video because it's going to take about two or three minutes for the program to start. That's normal. Um, and I'll come back when it's done. So here we are. The Kerbal Space Program. This is a... Oops. This is a brave Kerbinaut. He is from the planet Kerbin. Um, I'm going to press the start game button. And if you are playing for the first time, you will do a start new. I think I have already done uh, a couple times. So I'm going to do resume save. But, but to show you what it looks like, I'll just make a new one. I'm going to call this Mr. Eames. You'll put in your own name. I'm going to put an underscore three because I have a couple of other ones already in here. You can only choose sandbox at this point. And if you want to change what your flag looks like, because when you get to the moon, you'll actually plant your flag in the moon, um, you can click on that and pick a different one. And when you're ready, you press start. Here we are at the Kerbal Space Center. And there are several buildings here. Um, there's only a couple of them that we're really going to use very often. Um, this one is the space plane hangar, where you can actually make space planes. We're not really going to do that, um, at least at first. We have the launch pad where you launch your rockets. We have the tracking station which shows your different um, space um, ships that are in orbit. And we have our vehicle assembly building where we're going to spend the majority of our time. So I'm going to click on that. This is where we design and put together our rockets. You can see all kinds of little rocket scientist Kerbins cur running around here. But basically, we have a lot of tabs up here for different kinds of parts that we can put on a spaceship. Um, we always have to start with a pod, which is where your Kerbinauts will actually be in the rocket. Um, next to that, we have propulsion, which is where we actually have the rocket part, the engines that fire and get us into orbit. We have control, which I'll talk about a little bit later. This is how we're, we're going to add some things that make it easier to control our rockets. Structural are pieces that uh, help keep the, the rockets intact. Um, and in our next video, we're going to look a little bit more at some of these things. Aerodynamic are things that help us fly through the air. Um, so these are things that when we are still in the atmosphere where there is air, once we're out in space, there is no air, so we don't have to worry about it. But it's things like wings and nose cones um, that will make us go through the air a little bit easier. Utility is sort of a miscellaneous of things that are sort of left over. Um, we'll talk about a lot of these later on, but it's stuff like ladders to help climb down your rocket. It's things like landing gear for when you're landing on the moon. And the last tab is science, where we actually have instruments that would help you, allow you to do tests in space. So let's dive right in and make a rocket and see what we do. As I said before, we have to start with the pod section. This is where the Kerbinaut actually is during the flight, um, and you have to have one of those. So the best place to start is this simple command pod called the command pod MK1. If I left click that, it's going to throw it in the game just like that. I can click it and move it up and down. I can also use my mouse wheel to go up and down on the screen. If I hold down the shift key, if I hold down the shift key and move my mouse wheel, I can zoom in and out. And so I have my command pod. And for right now, we're going to stick over here in the propulsion area. Now we have sort of have two things going on here. We have engines and we have fuel. So the engines burn the fuel. The fuel shoots out um, is sort of like fire on the end of the engine, and that sh propels the rocket upwards. So let's make a really, really simple rocket. I'm going to grab this FLT400 fuel tank, and I'm going to stick it right there. You'll notice that these little green um, circles or spheres, that is telling me that those are parts where things can be attached. And once I get my mouse close, it automatically snaps on. I can click with my mouse and it sticks there. Okay, so now I have a pod and I have a fuel tank, but I don't have anything to burn the fuel. So let me grab one of my rockets, uh, rocket engines. So I'm going to take this sort of standard LVT45 liquid fuel engine. Notice it is a liquid fuel engine, which means that the fuel inside is liquid, just like gas. Like the gas you would put in a car, I should say. So here we have a very simple rocket. 
And I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to press the save button. Well, actually, let's name it first. I'm going to call it the Eames, MK stands for Mark, as in like version, the Eames Mark 1. And I'm going to press launch. This will bring us out to the launch pad. Okay, so here we are out on the launch pad. We've got a lot of things going on right now, but not too bad. I'll explain it to you as we go forward. In the bottom right-hand corner, you can see our brave Kervanaut named Jebediah Kerman. Um, he is very excited to be launching into space right now. Up here, we have what's called our altimeter. It tells us how high above sea level we are. We're actually already 72 meters above sea level. That's because we're on top of this big rocket platform. Um, right here, we have what's called like a gyroscopic ball, and it helps us to steer our rocket as we're flying it. Right now it's the dead center of the blue portion and that means we're headed, we're aimed straight up and that's where we want it to be right now. And so let's go ahead and do this. I'm going to hold down the left shift button and when I do you're going to notice that this little meter right here which is my throttle is going to move upward. So I'm going to put my throttle all the way up at 100%. If I wanted to I could press the control button right beneath it to lower it but when we take off, we pretty much want to have throttle all the way up. Once the throttle is all the way up, I can go ahead and I can press the space bar. And away we go. I'm going to go ahead and turn the sound down so you guys can hear me a little bit better. That should, uh, let's make it so you can kind of hear it. And we're going to resume. So you'll notice that my altimeter is, we're very rapidly moving upwards. So we're almost at a thousand meters, and a thousand meters is one kilometer. Over here you can see how much rocket fuel we actually have left. That is still kind of loud. So I'm going to go ahead and turn that, turn that down. Much better. Okay, and here we are. We're going. We've used about ha half of our fuel already. I'm going to start playing around a little bit. If I use the A and D keys, I can sort of turn myself, and you see to see how the ball down here, how what that looks like. That's sort of side to side. I can use the W and S keys to sort of go forward and backward, and I actually have just run out of fuel. So we are still moving upwards actually because we were pushing so hard that we haven't come to a stop yet but in a minute or two you're going to notice that this is going to slow down and we're going to start heading back down towards the earth and I'm afraid that our poor Cosm or Kerbinot Jebediah is in for a rough landing because we haven't really programmed in any way for him to land this thing um, so I can still sort of move around a little bit but I don't have any other way of changing my direction I can't I can't use any more fuel because I'm out of fuel. And any minute now, I'm going to start drifting back towards the Earth. Actually, I already am. See, I'm going back down now. You can press the V key, um, and that's going to change your camera angle. This is from orbit. The chase camera is from the back of the spacecraft. Auto does it from the side here. And there's one called free, where you can use the mouse to sort of get your own um, your own view going. Okay, so you'll see we're rapidly falling. I'm actually going to do something here. I'm going to, uh, I pressed the period button and I did what's called a time warp, which means I'm making time go twice as fast because I don't feel like waiting all this time. And I can do that a couple of times. Now I'm going three times speed. And I can bring it back down to normal by pressing the comma key. So if I go back down to one times normal speed, you can see that our altitude is rapidly dropping. We are heading in for a, uh, I won't call it a landing, but you can see our space center over here. And any second now, I'll speed up time a little bit again. Here we come. And boom. OK, so we can go ahead and assume that Jebediah didn't quite make it. I'm going to press the escape key. Oh, actually, it brought up the flight results, um, and this is like a record of what happened. We had liftoff, um, we had splashdown, poor Jebediah was killed, and 
our engine and our pod are both uh, were destroyed. So I also have some information over here that's valuable. Um, most notably, the highest altitude I achieved. I got 15,000 meters um, high. That's an important piece of information. Also, my fastest speed was 502 meters per second. That means that for every second, I was traveling 502 meters. That's really, really fast. Um, you know, rockets tend to go really, really quick. So I'm going to go ahead and click back to go to the vehicle assembly building. Okay, so here we are. We're back in the, uh, the assembly building. And let's make this a little bit more advanced. So I am going to go ahead and I am going to grab a few things. First of all, I'm going to take this engine off and I'm going to put it right here for a second. Because I want to point out to you that you can take these various fuel tanks and you can stack them. So now I have two of these fuel tanks and therefore I would have twice as much fuel. Um, so that might come in handy if I'm trying to reach orbit around the planet. Um, another couple of things I'm going to do are, I'm going to go to Utility, I think, and I'm going to press this Next Page button, because there's um, two pages of Utility things, and here's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for the, M, the Mark 16 parachute, and I'm going to put that at the top of my command pod, and I am going to move these off for a second, and I'm going to show you a really neat part about spaceships and it's called staging. So I am going to grab the going to go to the structural tab and I'm going to go over to the next page and there's this thing right here called a decoupler. And I'm going to put the decoupler right underneath the command pod between the command pod and the fuel tanks. I'm going to put my rocket engine back there. And this is almost the same rocket, but we have twice as much fuel. We added a parachute, and now we have what's called a decoupler. I'm going to go ahead and save, and I'm going to go ahead and press the launch button. So I'm back in here because I forgot one thing that's going to make our lives so much easier. So I'm going to go ahead and click on here on my uh, little decoupler. I'm going to move. That's going to take everything underneath the, the pod with it. I'm going to put it over here for a second, and I'm going to go over to control. Um, control. And I am looking for this thing called the Advanced SAS Module. This is going to make my life so much easier. Okay, so I'm going to stick that there and then stick everything back on where it was. Now I'm going to launch for real. Okay, so we're back on the launch pad with Mr. Bill Kerman, because um, Jebediah is no more. I'm going to raise my throttle with the uh, shift key, and I'm going to take off. And to illustrate a point, I'm going to go ahead and speed up time. And what's going to happen is, is my rocket's going to start to drift, and it becomes really difficult. So right now, I'm using the W, A, S, and D keys to try and keep it pointed upwards at a straight trajectory, um, but it's really difficult. Um, and what happens is before long, things start spinning, and we get out of control, and bad things happen. So I'm going to go ahead and... end this flight, and I am going to restart it. And I'm going to show you why we put that other piece on, the SAS module. So once everything is all set, I am going to throttle up, here we go, and I'm going to press the T key. And you'll notice this little light came on over here on the SAS, and what SAS does is it actually locks me in um, to this heading, which right now my heading is straight up. That's going to make my life so much easier. I'm going to go ahead and press the space bar to take off. I'm even going to speed up time for a second, and you're going to see that I'm not going to start wandering like I was before. I'm, I'm staying straight up, which makes my life, as I said before, so much easier. So right now time is passing about three times as fast as normal, um, so, so I can show you how this will work in the video. Um, I'm burning fuel really quickly, and we're almost out of fuel. I'm going to go back down to normal time, and we are now done. Okay, so you remember we had that thing called the radial decoupler. And I'm going to press spacebar. And what happened was the decoupler decoupled. 
So everything below my command pod is now decoupled. If coupled means coming together, decoupled means going apart. And so now I just have my pod, my MK1, with brave Bill Kerman inside. He's looking a little worried because he's already 50 kilometers or 50,000 meters above Kerbin. He's basically in space at this point. Okay, you can see how dark it is. We're basically above the atmosphere. So what I'm going to do is speed up time a little bit because he's still going um, upwards because um, how fast we, we were going for a while. And let's see, at some point, we're probably going to begin to fall back down. Maybe. We're still heading upwards, but we're slowing down, I think. There we go. Okay, and now we are, now we're falling. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and pause the video for a second while we begin to fall back towards Kerbin. Okay, so we are falling like a rock. We're at 19,000 meters. I'm going to go ahead and put time back to normal, and I'm going to press the space bar one more time. And that is that parachute that we added. And that's going to slow us down, I hope. You can see our speed is right here, and we are, we are slowing down very quickly, and that's from the drag of the parachute. Once we hit a certain um, altitude, that parachute's going to open fully. I think it's 500 meters when it opens fully. And that's going to let us glide gently down, and this way Bill Kerman does not meet the same fate as his predecessor Jebediah. So I'm going to speed up time a little bit to make this go quicker. but we are still losing speed. We're down to 90. Oh, that didn't go so well. Actually, I guess I had too much speed. Um, so we still ended up exploding. Um, my apologies to Bill Kerman. Okay, so let's see. Um, Bill Kerman was killed. Oh, not so good. So my mistake that time is I probably waited too long to uh, deploy that parachute because we couldn't slow down quite fast enough um, to let him land safely. But I want to talk about this decouple thing right here. That was what allowed us to shoot this these um, tanks and engine away um, so that we could land with the pod. And that is called staging. We have different stages of this. So the first stage right here, down here, is when I press the space bar the first time, it fired my rocket. You can see the rocket gets highlighted when I move over that. The second time I press the space bar, we decoupled. That's a decouple sign. You can see the two things separating. The third time I press the space bar, my parachute deployed. That's called staging. What I could have done is I could have had a decoupler here and another rocket there. Oops, that's a big one. I don't mean that one. Let's try this one. There we go. And I can still attach this down here. Maybe. There we go. And that way, now I could make it so that things are decoupling when I want them to, and I can shoot pieces of my rocket off when I want to. Okay, so I think you guys pretty much understand the basics of a simple rocket at this point. So what do I want you to do is create your own rocket using the pieces that I've shown you how to use so far. So we have uh, fuel tanks and we have engines. We even have some decouplers in here, and we have uh, the very, very important um, mod uh, SAS, uh, it's in control, um, advanced SAS module. Don't forget that. It's very important to keep you straight. Um, the couple other other pieces you might want to add, um, mostly to look cool, but also to help you fly better, are these aerodynamic pieces. So these are things like little wings. Um, so if I were to grab a winglet, okay, I can add that to my rocket. But I don't want just one. I want more. So down this button down here is called the symmetry mode. And if I click it, you see I have two now. So when I go to attach pieces, I'm attaching two pieces. Or if I want to attach four, now I would be attaching four wings, all the way up to eight. Um, and I was playing around earlier, and I think I thought this one was really cool looking. So I'm going to add, let me see if I can add these things called swept wings. 
all very cool. Uh, I don't know if it'll help me fly any better, but I like the way it looks. So I'm going to go ahead and stick those on there. And you gotta be a little, sometimes it's a little tricky. Uh, you got to work with it. But once you get it the way you want it, um, you can take off, launch, and the important piece is at the end, when you end the flight, and it tells you how high up you got, that's what you take the picture of, that's what you save, and that's what you turn in. So, good luck. I can't wait to see how high you get.